Remember this storage backplane from my Raspberry Pi hardware raid video? Broadcom sent it with a Mega Raid storage card and it worked great with the SATA and SAS drives I tested, but this backplane is special. It's not just a stock serial cables backplane, it's a customized box codenamed Elrond, and it demonstrates a new storage standard, SFFTA1005. Along with the Mega Raid card's tri mode support, I can, in theory, hot swap SATA, SAS, and PCI Express and VME drives all using the same slot. In my last hardware raid video, I could only demonstrate SATA and SAS drives because apparently some other YouTube channel got first dibs on Kyoxia's latest drives, which I was trying to borrow for my own testing. They're the same picture, except they're not. I had asked Kyoxia if I could borrow a couple of their enterprise NVMe drives, and they were like, yeah, sounds good. So are you going to be testing this on a beefy new server with PCI Express Gen 4? I was like, well, actually, I have a Raspberry Pi with PCI Express Gen 2. And they were like, wait, what? That's not even possible. And who uses high-end enterprise drives on a $35 single board computer? So I told them that it is possible with the CM4, now that the Broadcom driver sorted out, and as to who uses high-end enterprise gear on a Pi, well, I do. So here they are, the Kyoxia PM6 and CM6. And you heard it here first, these bleeding edge SAS 24G and NVMe drives work brilliantly on the Raspberry Pi. They might be a little overkill, but that's how I like it. I should note that this video is not sponsored and I'm not keeping these drives either. I just wanted to see what's possible with a humble little tiny Raspberry Pi. And if you want to skip to the part where I start hot plugging the drives and see if the Raspberry Pi explodes, you can jump ahead to this time. Kyoxia, if you didn't already know, is descended from Toshiba Memory Corporation, so they're not new to the flash memory game. The drives they sent me use the same internal flash chips, so what's the difference between them? And why are companies building NVMe SSDs in this form factor? I thought all NVMe drives were M.2. Well, server vendors try to build their servers for a broad range of applications. Having one standard form factor, in this case the SFF, or small form factor, for all mass storage means they don't have to build and sell dozens of different types of servers depending on someone's storage needs. And besides, this drive, tiny as it is, is a lot bigger in volume than the board space on a tiny M.2 drive. With that volume comes more room for up to 30 terabytes of storage, not to mention better thermals, which is important since these drives can suck down up to 25 watts per drive. These cooling holes aren't just for good looks. And there are similar size U.2 SSDs, but they required different cabling than SATA and SAS bays. And while SATA speeds have gotten stagnant, SAS, or Serial Attached SCSI, has continued to get better every generation. The PM6 is SAS 24G, which if you do the math, is four times faster than the fastest SATA drives. The PM6 is capable of up to 4.3 gigabytes per second read speeds, and the CM6 can pump through 6.9 gigabytes per second on a PCI Express Gen 4 bus. The major difference between the two is their communication interface. I won't get too technical here, but the interface used for the NVMe drive follows the SFFTA1001 spec, which is sometimes called U.3, but that's not the official technical name due to a kerfuffle between different storage vendors. It allows one port to serve three types of drive, SATA, SAS, and PCI Express NVMe. And while some people say SAS's days are numbered, rumors of SAS's death in enterprise storage have been greatly exaggerated. Some features of SAS, like effortless hot swap, backwards compatibility, a mature management protocol, and existing implementations still keep it relevant. But there are advantages to PCI Express-based storage, and the SFFTA1001 spec allows NVMe drives to work with the exact same slots and cabling where you traditionally only had SATA and SAS drives. And if you have a faster computer and the latest Mega Raid card, you can get PCI Express Gen 4 speeds for all the drives giving more than 100 gigabits per second of total data throughput. Enough about the standards though. Let's throw these drives in Elron and see how the Raspberry Pi handles them. All right, so in my older video, I was using some cheap Kingston consumer SATA SSDs and some cheap used HP 10K SAS drives. I have the Elron enclosure connected to the Pi through this Mega Raid card, and I have the patch driver running so I can see the card. Using store CLI, I can see two SATA SSDs and two SAS hard drives in the first four slots. I'm going to hot unplug one of the Kingston SSDs with the Pi running. 
And after a few seconds, Storage CLI stops showing it in the list of drives. And if I plug it back in, it reappears. So SATA hot plug works fine. And now I'm going to plug in Keoxia's PM6, which is a SAS 24G drive, into the bottom bay, and we'll see if it comes up. It took a few seconds, but it also shows up just fine. And now is the part that's really fun, since I've tried hot plugging NVMe M.2 drives on the Pi before, and it never goes well. I'm going to plug the CM6, which is an NVMe PCI Express drive, into the fifth slot, and we'll see if it's automatically recognized too. And look, it took a few seconds, but now it's showing up too. Now I'll plug in the other CM6 drives I have, and after a few seconds, they also appear. So hot plugging all three types of drives works great. To see how they perform, I wanted to test individual drives first, so I switched the RAID card into JBOD mode, so the Pi would see just a bunch of disks. I used LSBLK to identify all the drives by serial number and size, and once I identified which drives were the PM6 and CM6, I partitioned, formatted, and mounted them. After the initialization finished, I ran my disk benchmark script on both drives and got these results. Interestingly, the CM6 NVMe drive performed better than the PM6 SAS drive for random writes, but was neck and neck for read speeds. And if you're one of Keoxia's marketing representatives watching this part of the video, you might be screaming at the screen that these numbers are wildly incorrect. And you'd be right. These numbers are being measured on this tiny Raspberry Pi. It's a tiny little five-year-old mobile CPU with one lane of PCI Gen 2 bandwidth. It's pretty much maxed out at 400 megabytes per second. And if you can afford a real server like Server the Home can, you can get speeds up to 6.9 gigabytes per second. That's 17 times faster than the Pi can even dream of getting. So with that in mind, I wanted to see if the Pi could get a little bit faster if I put the CM6 NVMe drives into a RAID 0 array, and it did. Not a huge difference, but now large block size random I.O. was about as fast as it could possibly be on the Pi, and 4K random reads were a little bit faster. To give a little more data, I also compared the speeds of the single CM6 against a single Kingston SSD and a single old HP SAS hard drive. To the surprise of nobody, the super old used hard drive is absolutely decimated in random performance, even by a cheap consumer SSD. But throughput isn't the only consideration when it comes to storage. Enterprise drives usually have better warranties, better ability to handle massive read or write optimized workloads, and price tags to match. Speaking of price, these are some of the fastest enterprise SSDs on the market, and judging by the prices people are paying for them used on eBay, they ain't cheap. And with that price tag, do I think anyone else will be plugging Keoxia CM6 drives into their Raspberry Pi anytime soon? Maybe, maybe not. But as someone who lives on cheaper secondhand hardware, the fact that it can be done today means that when these drives are recycled in the next generation of servers, it's good to know that this and future Pi generations should be able to work with them. Of course, with Chia miners eating up all the hard drives on the market today, maybe it'll be cheaper to buy enterprise drives like these than SATA hard drives. Who knows? Subscribe so you don't miss out on my next insane test. And until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling. Who uses high enterprise enterprise high high nah. two SAS hard drives in the first floor slots? Floor. Oh dang. I should maybe I should just stop holding things during my videos. These cooling holes are <clears throat> <clears throat> these cooling holes make me cough. 24G drive into the bottom day. Bad. This paragraph is the end of me. This tiny little thing, I should hold one. You can get speeds up to 6.9 gigabit. I should just learn to read, probably.